Oh, hello. You came up to learn how to do some fly fishing, eh? If fishing is the sport of the contemplative man, then summer is the time of times for it. But come, let's go quickly before anyone else joins us. August is a very busy month for visitors, and while we may not catch any fish today, one result is unfailing. I never get any work done in August. Fly fishing as a sport and a technique has deep English origins. Dating back to 1486, when the essay, The Treatise on Fishing with an Angle, attributed to Dame Juliana Barnes, appeared in the Book of Satin Albans, which was a compilation of matters that might interest a gentleman of that era. The popularity of fly fishing took another leap in 1653, as English writer Isaac Walton published his well-known fishing book, The Complete Angler. While the book was in Walton's writing, some verses were lifted from John Denny's 1613 book, The Secrets of Angling. The best-known version of Walton's book, however, was the version published in 1931 with illustrations by Arthur Rackham. Fly fishing became quite popular in England by the mid-19th century with the expansion of the middle class and leisure time. The discourse on proper and improper methods of fly fishing that were present in Britain were paid little attention to in North America by fly fishers. And, as Roderick puts it, for good reasons. Fly fishing is essentially a simple sport and no one should feel bound to encumber themselves with anything beyond its simplicities. It is a pleasure, a recreation, a delight, something to be enjoyed, not an obsession, a duty or a driving force. Fishermen are searchers. It is true we search for fish at times with great diligence, but we search also for experiences. And there are no greater experiences than the seasons, varied and repeated year after year in our special comings and goings. It usually starts with a worm, and it may well be that there is still no adequate substitute for such a start. Not that there is any harm in starting directly with a fly, except that for a very young person the demands may be a little too great and it can be discouraging to watch the easy triumph of one's contemporaries with lures and bait while the fly goes unrewarded. Almost any salt or brackish water fish that feed on other small creatures can be taken on the fly, or rather on a lure or streamer fly that is cast and worked like a fly. Bonefish and Pacific Salmon are two of the outstanding examples, but the list is practically limitless from rockfish to striped bass, from mackerel to tarpon and tuna. Any fish that eats creatures can be caught fly fishing. The variables depend on when you are fishing and where. Here, a fisher can catch steelhead trout and cutthroat all year round, while catching chinook chum, coho and pinks require fishing during a certain time of year. Fishing is meant to be a gentle sport, not unduly hazardous, but any mixture of ignorance and foolhardiness can make it both rough and fatal. There is, I think, not much point in being a fly fisherman unless one is prepared to be generous and fairly relaxed about it all. Competition has no place at the streamside. One's purpose is not to do better than some other fishermen, but to get response from the fish and learn something about them. And both of these objectives are best achieved by the concentration of a relaxed mind. So much of the charm of fly fishing is in the way it leads one onto more ambitious techniques and more intricate understanding of fish and their ways. The respect for the fish's environment, in my humble opinion, extends far beyond the water itself. It takes in all the creatures and growth under the water or on the water along the banks. 
it extends far out into the countryside, into the meadows and swamps, up into the high mountains where the streams have their origin. It implies not merely a concern for such things and desire to protect them, but a positive affection for the whole natural world and a deep desire to understand it. In August, people come for the big salmon, and they come from the ends of the earth. There seems a loosening of tension those summer evenings, as though the growth of young creatures made all creatures bolder, and the rich plenty of summer feed overbalanced the need for caution and suspicion. Now, we've had a lovely time out here, haven't we? But I best head in now. I have a book to write, and my endless battle with book reviewers is nowhere near as pleasant as a battle with a fish. But if there's one thing I've learnt in my life, it's this. Most book reviewers can't fish. This has been Reading with Roddy.